What's going on, guys? Coach Madden, YouGoProBaseball.com, here with the man, Jeff Fry. She gone! She gone. The nation. It's a movement, big movement now. Yeah. Huge on Facebook, uh, YouTube as well. I'll leave his link down below where you can check out his videos. Great stuff, real funny. Um, but now you're posting up some real instructional stuff too, which is awesome because there's not many guys who played at your level in the MLB for a long time who is giving great advice on hitting. So I kind of wanted to pick your brain. In this video, I want to talk about the big misconceptions of hitting because there's a lot of stuff out there and I kind of want to get your thoughts on all of it. The first one being, are we supposed to swing down at the ball or are we trying to create an optimal launch angle and launch that ball over the fence? What, what do you got? What do you got? Yeah, for me, my, I always try to swing down through the ball. You know, I, I was always hit with my hands high because I was trying to hit line drives and ground balls. Now, if my hands were down lower and I got under the ball, a fly ball for me most of the times was an out. I used to get yelled at in the Meyer leagues when I hit fly balls. So I was taught to hit line drives and ground balls. So the way to do that was to hit down through the ball. Okay, once you get through here, your bat naturally is going to go up. You can't stay down all the way through it. So for me, it was just down through it. So you swung down there and that ball went up. Yeah, we tried to create backspin. Just, there we go. That was better. Yeah, but so that wasn't me. I was trying to hit it right past the pitcher. Okay, and if the guy threw harder, it would go to the right side. If I, if the off speed pitch or I was out ahead of it a little bit, I would pull the ball, but I wasn't going up to the plate trying to hit the ball underneath it and create some stupid launch angle and hit a weak fly ball to center field. That would do my team no good. So what was your thought? Was that mostly uh, like a, a thought process in your head was going, you know, going down to the ball or was it something that you were physically trying to make happen with the bat? Uh, it was more of a thought process. More, uh, I just, just get the barrel to the ball as quick as I could. That was the key, short and quick. Now this long thing trying to get underneath it wouldn't have worked for me. The guys threw too hard, okay? So I tried to, st to wait as long as I could. And then I would try to be short and, that's why I could hit good fastballs. I could hit, you know, 95 plus because I was just real short to the ball, kind of like this. She gone. Like that. She gone. <laughs> you know, and so I, I, that's what worked for me. But I wasn't a power hitter. Juan Gonzalez, Ruben Sierra, those guys, I mean, they did different things because they were bigger and stronger and had more power. But for me, I had to do that to stay in the league. Now, let's talk about the leg kick. Because you hear guys talking about a big leg kick, let's get some energy and some power, or let's not even move, maybe up and down, or like a toe tap and pause and go. Like, what is your philosophy on the leg kick or the, or the toe tap or the, the stride, I guess we should call it? Yeah, well, just like, I mean, it's different for everyone. Okay, some guys can hit with a leg kick, some guys like the stride, some guys like the toe tap. I played with guys in the big leagues that were all successful, that all did it different. Palmero had the toe tap. You know, Ruben Sierra, Juan Gonzalez, they had the leg kick. Mo Vaughn didn't really stride. Nomar didn't stride either. Okay, so it's just different. Every person is different and whatever works for you, works for you. And for me, the leg kick was, I mean, it, it, it made my career. Okay, I didn't have enough strength to drive the ball through the infield and the gaps without the leg kick. So it gave me more leverage to put my leg down against a stiff front leg and that way I could drive the ball. And it was, I mean, I just had a basic upright stance like this, put, pick my leg up, and put it right back down and swing. And then one of the things you hear a lot is get your foot down early, get your foot down. I never thought about that ever, okay? If, I didn't, if my timing was off, I wouldn't swing, right? I mean, just because someone throws a strike doesn't mean it's, you have to swing at it. Okay, you get your pitch, and my, my plan was, I'm gonna get my fastball, and when I get it, I'm not gonna miss it. Okay, and I didn't miss it very often. Usually when I swung, I put it in play. So it was just upright, leg kick, swing. I, would, I got my foot down right before I swung, and that's all I thought about. And you talked about there, the front leg, and hitting against a, a hard front leg, or a strong front leg, I guess I should say. Stiff. Stiff front leg. Mm -hmm. I hear some guys out there talking about like trying to maintain the bend in that front leg when they're, they're hitting. Obviously, you disagree with it, at least in your uh, personal experience. It just didn't work for me. Right. I, I'm the same way. I think 
from a from an energy standpoint, you want to be strong. Same thing with pitching. I was a pitcher. When I'm pitching, if I'm leaking this way or soft with my front side or leaking this way, all my energy is leaking. You're losing power. Yeah. So if I'm hit, staying behind that, you know, I, it's helping my hips finish and turn, but it's also like that energy. It's like in a car. If you're driving a car into a brick wall, all the energy, the stuff in the car is going to fly forward. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. But instead of the stuff in the car, it's your hands letting them fly forward. That, so that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I just tried to have it stiff right here and then swing and keep it stiff. I didn't, I mean, there's plenty of times where I was out front, maybe an off speed pitch, where I would put my leg down and be drifting a little bit, but I'd still, as long as I kept my hands back, I could still make contact. That's exactly how I feel about it. What about the elbow? I know, especially at like the youth level, you'll hear parents, get your elbow up, get your elbow up. You know, what do you think? Should it be high up here like this? Should it be down here? Is it different for everybody? What it's you got? It's different for everybody. I can, I mean, there's so many, so many cases where um, you saw A-Rod, you know, A-Rod's elbow was here, okay? Kevin Euclid was here, <laughs> right? Julio Franco was here. Um, I just tried to relax, okay? So my elbow wasn't up, um, but if you watch when I put my elbow up, what happens to the barrel of the bat? It Tilts. wraps. Yeah. So now I got to go from here all the way around to here. So for me, the elbow did that and, it, and it's not something that I wanted. So I just tried to relax my hands just like this is, and make my, my hands as loose as they could be on the bat so I'm quicker. Okay, whenever you grip the bat tight and you muscle up, it slows you down. So I was just trying to be as loose as I could. And if I'm facing Randy Johnson or Roger Clemens or uh, Mariano Rivera, I don't have to provide the power. All I have to do is get this part of the bat to the baseball. They're providing the power for me, right? So I had to get this to there as quick as I could. <laughs> there we go. And that was it, just short and quick. And that's just, I mean, like we keep stressing, that's what worked for me. What worked for uh, other guys worked for them. And it's just not a cookie cutter way to do it. There's not certain things that everybody has to do. Everybody's different. And if you can stand on your head and hit four home run, I mean, hit 400, nobody's ever going to say a word to you. <laughs> so do it your way, find out what works for you and work at it and practice, 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 and you'll get better. That's funny you say about the grip pressure is light because I used to grip it really tight when I hit. And maybe that's why I ended up being a pitcher. <laughs> but that leads me to another question. What about the grip as far as like you hear guys like li lining up your knocking knuckles or line up the box knuckles or the big knuckles like how was that for you well when i first came into pro ball i kind of had it wrapped like that okay okay and and they taught me to line up these knuckles instead and it made a big difference for me what did you feel from that like well, did you feel like it was looser no or? what i felt is like when you when you have your hands here and you go to swing as soon as you get here you can start feeling some resistance okay so naturally this bat, because of my grip, the bat is now gonna start going this way, okay? And then when I changed my knuckles like this, I didn't feel this until out here, okay? Before I felt it right here, wrap like, as soon as I get there, this bat's gonna go this way. Um, but with my knuckles here, I don't feel any resistance until I get out through the strike zone, you know? And I actually was working with a kid 10 years ago, and he, I was like, all right, left-handed hitter, I was like, hit a couple of balls the other way and he couldn't do it. And I was just giving him some flips and I was like, let me see your grip. And he's just strangling this bat, right? So, and I, I showed him how it worked. I said, you see when you get here, the bat's gonna naturally go this way. You can't drive the ball that way. Try your knuckles like this. And sure enough, man, he starts hitting bullets up the middle the other way and the game first time up, line drive to the left field. His parents were like, what can we pay you? What can we pay you? He's, got a, he's been going to this hitting coach. And I said, and he never noticed this. It's like, you might need a new hitting coach, you know, because that was something simple, you know. And that's kind of how the whole Shigon thing got started for you, right? And maybe not with that young player, but just the idea of, like, there's a lot of bad information out there and that you just wanted to share your experience on what you did and, and maybe it could help a few people along the way, right? I don't yeah, know. I don't exactly. want to put words it, in your mouth. but Yeah, exactly. It's, it seems like a lot of parents aren't educated um, when it comes to, instructors so they send their kids to the local instructors and they get in there and whatever those guys happen to be teaching is what their kids are going to learn and a lot of you know parents are busy they got full-time jobs or whatever they're taking their kid in there because they want to do what's best for their kid and give them every opportunity but a lot of times it's not working because they're not being taught properly 
by by people who have at least played baseball or you know at some type of higher level and understand hitting is not about the swing there's more to it than just the swing mechanics and the, the angle of your bat it's a mental approach um, so th that's mainly what the Shigon movement is about is trying to educate parents that hey find somebody reputable that's going to help your kid and not just cookie cutter them and teach them like everybody else in their facility hits with a PVC pipe or who knows. Right. And I was I was talking to a few guys earlier here in the Texas area and I think the biggest at least for me the biggest thing from a coach's perspective is if their intent is to help that player be the best that they can be whatever they're doing information wise if they if they have the good intent I think that is the main and and like we talked about before every player is different so you're going to say one thing to one guy and something different to the next right. hitter like you said you're not going to judge anyone until you see them swing and what they're doing right. so i think that's a huge part for coaches is not maybe not to have everybody on the same program but look at each individual and see how you can help them through your experience i'm very similar to you in the way that i teach from my memory and my visceral feelings of what i did when i played mm -hmm. versus just information that I, I learned, you know, just heard or whatever. Right. So I, I like to try to explain it in a way that almost when I'm explaining it, I feel it within my body. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember it mm -hmm. and I try to explain it in layman's terms. And I think, I think if we could get that balance within coaches, there would be a, 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 a difference in the game today because the game today is a little bit crazy at it all is. levels. It is. And, and I think another thing that, that I've seen a lot of is, is uh, these hitting guys watching videos of the greatest players that ever played and trying to teach kids to hit that way. You know, these guys are the greatest players because they're special. They have certain attributes that not everybody on earth has. Great hand-eye coordination, great vision, great balance. They, they know how their body moves and they develop their swings and their styles of hitting their entire lives. So going into a cage and saying, okay, what, look at this video. This is how Barry Bonds hit. That's not going to work for most people. I couldn't have hit that way. Right. You know, so you have to find out what works for you, your unique swing. When you find something you feel comfortable with, work at it, practice, practice, do trial and error. And once you find something that works, stick with it and try to be as consistent as you can. That's great. Great information, man. I appreciate it. If you guys want to hear more from Jeff Fry, go to his YouTube channel. Again, I'll leave the link down below. Click it, go over there, subscribe to his channel, click the little bell so you're notified every time he posts new videos. He's posting a bunch of stuff yeah, up yeah. there. So uh, look forward to that. Check him out. If you guys got any questions, hop down in the comments section below. Let us know. We'll uh, answer them if we can. And thank you so much for watching, Jeff. Thank you so much for your time, yeah, man. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it.